What's up Fire fam? My name's Karen Fire and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today this is essentially going to be a guide, an updated guide on my hidden armors on the Conan Exiles land and boy has there been a lot of additions to this since my last video. So hopefully I'm going to make this video short and snappy for you and try and include as much as I can because we have a lot to go through so let's get into it. And we're actually going to start off in the unnamed city because there are several different bosses around here that will drop different types of armor with interesting perks and stuff like that on it that people might have not discovered yet. One of them being this skeleton boss right here. He can drop a number of amazing things and sometimes he doesn't, sometimes he does, but I would say it's one of the simpler bosses in the unnamed city to kill. I'm just going to remind you in this guide it's not all about killing bosses, um, not all of the armors are hidden that way, it's just we're going through this one first. So starting with this free skull boss here, this is called Guardian of the Flame, it is a skeleton boss in the unnamed city. If you kill him he can drop many different things including fragments of power, but just to give you an idea of his HP pool, there you go, this is hidden with a legendary weapon with a damage buff. And if you want any of the armors from the Guardian of the Flame, he's located here, right on the slave pit in the Undead City on the map. The Guardian of the Flame actually drops 10 different pieces of armor you can get from the Undead City. There are more, but I'm just showing you because he's one of the biggest droppers out of all of them. So this includes helmets, armor, kind of this kind of thing. We're going to start with the Commander's Chestplate. I'm going to show you why. These are different and what they're all about. So I've just put this on, as you can see it's a medium. It's already given me 154 armor on its own. It gives a bonus of vitality. It only has one heat protection slot, but that should be okay if you're in desert. And you can see he's given me a plus three in vit. So if I paired this with some more vit armor, it would give me a quite a nice increase. And that armor is quite nice for a medium set on its own. Moving on to the Scorpion Helmet, if I'm to put this on, it gives 88 armor on its own, it's a medium set, it gives bonus survival and one bar of cold. So you can see it's giving me a plus 3 in my survival perk, so it might be ideal for those who would like to make a farming build or something like that. And when we switch to our Scorpion Harness, you can see it gives us 154 armor, a medium set again, and it has a cleansing buff on it. If we're to dip into the description, you can see this actually periodically cleanses the wearer from poison. So if you were to go and fight an actual scorpion and you got poisoned, then this chest plate would help you out a lot. And there is no attribute bonus on this one, it's just that ability. But I thought if you just quickly whip it on and off, it's handy that way. Next we're going on to Legacy of the Nordheimers, a very, very nice helmet if you want to go into the cold. It actually gives you a stunning 4 bars of cold protection, cold insulated, it's a heavy piece of armour with 192 armour to it, and it gives no attributes. Next we're moving on to the War Mammoth Boots, we put these on our feet. This gives us bonus encumbrance, 1 bar of cold protection, it's heavy, and its armour is 96. It gives you a plus 3 in encumbrance, so maybe if you wanted to carry a lot of things, these would be great for that. Next we're moving on to the exquisite silk shirt and leggings, but first the shirt. Is it a light piece with 117 armor? It gives extra armor with 2 bars of heat protection, which is really nice for a light set actually. It means you'd obtain the roll and keep the roll going, that fast snappy roll. There is no attribute, so it just makes you nice and snappy. And then if we're to switch to the leggings, you can see this also gives extra armor. Comes in at 84 armor and it's light, so it's not as good as the uh, exquisite silk shirt, but it's still pretty decent. And again, two bars of heat. Moving on to our next one, the War Dancer chest. There we go, it looks really nice. It gives bonus strength, one bar of heat protection, 56 armor, light. And there you go, it's got a plus 3 in your strength. And last but not least out of these drops is the Night Stalker's Mask. You can see things have already changed as soon as I put this on. This gives night vision, so you wouldn't have to wait for a potion to decay and go on. You can just whip on and off this mask. It gives 32 armor and it's a light mask. And here we go, things are really dark. So now we can actually see the effects of this mask without burning your eyes out. There you go kind of looks just like day with this kind of thing on. Funny enough though, this is not the only undead city boss that will drop things for you. The Winged Death is also one that will drop special stuff and is the only one that will drop 
Vermenhain. The winged death boss actually resides in the aviary in this part of the undead city on its own on the bottom right. Now what's special about Vermenhain? So we're going to have a look at the pants first and put that on. You can see it's given me one bar of heat, 44 armor, it's a light set and it's given me bonus attributes. So if we look at them you can see it's given me a plus one in absolutely everything. So if you wanted to even it out, uh, these would be pretty good for it. Now we're looking at the boots, you can see it also gives bonus attributes, 20 armor light and one bar of heat and does also the same thing so if you were to wear them together you'd get a plus two and everything. The winged death also gives a black feather helmet. Now this thing is kind of cursed, well it is cursed. It gives 95 armor medium but the thing with it is it will half corrupt your bars of health and stamina when you use it. You can see though it says it gives you a higher armor why it curses you so that's its kind of balance out and it gives no attributes honestly though i'd probably leave this <laughs> probably wouldn't wear it now of course there is another one in this location that will also drop different things from the others but it only drops these set of things they're like the brute wear so it will drop the helmet of the brute and the gauntlets of the brute what you're looking for is a big skeleton dog guy. He usually spawns in the middle, but he's wandering at the moment around the area. And this is what he looks like. Big, tall, and scary. He's a free skull boss though, so do be careful. And he is undead, so that means bleeding and poisoning will not work. And you can find him on the map just at the top of the undead city right here. Now if you're curious what these armors do, we're going to start with the helmet. It's a medium helmet with 88 armor, it's giving me one heat protection and it's giving me bonus strength. And as you can see in my strength I've got a plus 3. Now I have to put the gauntlets on, it gives me bonus grit, one heat bar, 44 armor and it's a medium set. Again that is a plus 3 in grit. The last lady we're visiting here is indeed the Red Mother. Now she drops many, many different things and it's rather interesting what she drops but she can also drop nice armor. You can drop the dragon scale helmet, the god's eye and the horned helmet. No other undead city boss will drop these. Starting off with the horned helmet, if I'm to put that on my head, you can see it's a heavy helmet. 192 armor, and it's pretty much just a hat that gives you a lot of armor. But you'll notice on this it has incredible durability so it's going to last you quite a long time. Next we're having a look at the dragon scale helmet. It is cold insulated to the rooftops. It has got five bars of cold insulation, which makes it very, very good for the cold. I imagine you could probably just walk around with this helmet in the cold biome and you'd be just fine. It's a medium set, gives you 88 armor, and it doesn't give any of these attributes, but I say it's very, very worth having if you're having trouble with insulating yourself. And last of all, the god eye. I kind of find it kind of funny. Um, it gives you bonus strength, 32 armor, it's light, and if we look in the attributes it gives me a plus 3 in strength. And that's pretty much all of the specials that will mainly drop your main pieces of hidden armor in the Undead City. Of course they're not the only ones, you can also get random pieces of all of these bits of armor that I've displayed from the Commander, which can be found here in this box area right here with his army of skeletons. The Grave Walker, which can be found walking along, he's a free skull boss. This path extends all the way from here to here, so you can see him in that kind of area. And last but not least, the Watcher is also one that will drop special armor bits. Now these all have different rates of dropping things and some don't drop some at all, so if you just want to go by the ones I've shown you, by what they drop, then I hope that will help you out. But this guy is literally located right next to the Red Mother by the spawning pools, but he's on top of this structure. Now we're moving on to some slightly more easier armors to find. We're going to start with finding the Relic Hunter armor feet. And this can be found in the city of Sert Marie. It can particularly be found at this place called Rasma's house, with the half-open door. If I was to look on my map, you can see I am located right here on the far side. And it's quite easy to see because it's opposite where the bridge is. Now if I'm to climb up here, right to the top, you're going to see there's an armor stand with a hat on it. If you click on it, you can see you will learn the Relic Hunter armor and the Relic Hunter epic armor. 
and you can see these under your tab right here so here we go two great armors next on our list is the hyena armor now this is a great survival hidden armor you can find near the black hand black galleon now you can literally find this if you were to go into the camp and all the way to the back by the prison bars you're going to see another armor stand if we go right up to it and select you can see we have learned hyena fur armor and hyena fur epic this stuff is cold armor and it comes in epic and non-epic so if you want some survival gear this is the gear for you you can find the armor stand right here on top of scoundrel's gateway just above next we're moving on to azura's armor the tribute armor towards the people that run in the community so you might need a torch for this one because we're going caving now you will need to go to the end of this cave for this one so i'm going to run all the way through so just follow my lead And here we go, we're in the cave. What we're looking for is this guy here, actually. But if you kill him off, you might just get an Azura spawn. And here's one now. They are very, very recognizable. And they come in different classes of what they are. So you can get carpenters, armorers, alchemists, all of that. But you'll find, if you are to kill them, if I just kill a few off here, sometimes they drop two bits, sometimes they drop one. But you can see this one has dropped me a hood and a pair of leggings. And this cave can be found right here at Sinner's Refuge. This little cave here, and it's this deep in. So it's quite deep in, but you should be able to get there just fine. Now Azurus is a quite nice looking funky piece of armor. You can see here. And it is a light set. It gives you 80% armor, but it has no temperature insulation. And it's all bonus survival. But it gives you a plus 15 in survival when you wear the whole set. And you can see this has boosted me to the first perk and nearly to the second one. So it's really nice for harvesting nodes faster at the harder work perk if you really like survival. And now we're going to move on to the beaches because we are looking for Black Corsair and Black Hand Hidden Armors. It comes from an armor stand and you will need to venture onto the ship. But do beware there is a lot of big cats. And here we are at the top, you can see there is this little kind of stand here and we click E or whatever your select button is on it, it should give you the recipe. There is also a book down here that you can grab. So there you go, you learn the feats from these. So this gives you the Black Corsair complete armor set and it also gives you a feat called Buccaneer which gives you a peg leg, eye patch, earrings and all that kind of thing. If you want the locations on the far side in the jungle, you can see right here on the map, I'm just to the side of Buccaneers Bay, up in the top of the ship. Now to look at the full Black Corsair kind of look, it kind of is similar to the Azura bit, but it's not. It's a light set of armor, and altogether it's going to give you 217 armor. It's a cold set, but it all gives you agility, and that gives you 10 plus agility, so if you wanted the iron endurance without putting any points in, well that will complete that perk entirely on its own. Our next piece of hidden armor is very special but also very difficult to get to. It requires a lot of climbing so you're going to need to put stuff into your grit attributes and maybe even your agility as well to be able to climb this properly. You might also want to invest in some consumables to do this. But we're going to have an attempt of climbing it. I haven't done it in a while but we're just going to fast track it so let's go. I'm just going to say though I'm right here near Fingerfang Rock but on the other side of the eyeball so I'm going to be giving this a go of climbing up here. I haven't done it in a while so do bear with me but I'm going to fast forward my way up there for you.
And here we go. We're up here by the Mountaineer. If we talk to him, you can see you can learn the Mountaineer, or you can purchase improved climbing boot schematic for a fragment of power out of him. But if you go ahead and purchase with a fragment of power for the improved climbing boot schematic and eat it, you will learn Expert Mountaineer. And you can see this will give you the reinforced climbing boots and gloves. So now I'm going to put on the normal climbing boots and gloves. And these should be a lot better at climbing, so you should have more, essentially more stamina and stuff like that to go around climbing things. As you can see, it's only tickling down why I go up this mountain now, not like it was beforehand, and that's what these will do for you. Now, if you wanted to put on the reinforced versions, so you want that nice reinforced climbing, you can see it has the same kind of tick rate, maybe a little bit lower, maybe even. But it just has a little bit more reinforcement in there, so you can see the durability is a lot better than the other ones. The other ones have 190, this one has 480, so these are what these are good at. The exact top of the peak is right here, right next to Fanga Fang Rock, and it might take you a while to get up here. But if you want that kind of perk, then I'd say it's worth it. But it is a very high up place, and quite a good place for pictures, I suppose. Now the next set of armor, I would say, is really quite difficult to get depending on your ways of luck. We actually have to go into the library for this one to be able to get it. You might get lucky on getting this first try or it might, might take you thousands of tries. But this will basically give you the end result of getting reinforced skillless armor and normal. If you have no idea where this is, well this is the undead city in the library. So for a map reference we're just here, the archives right there. And uh, we have to go past the obelisk and into the library. And if we go to the right in our library, you can see this bookshelf here. If you are to click E on it, then you can get different things out of it. However, if you want this armor, you need to make a trade. One fragment of power for one scroll. And this can be a scroll out of many scrolls that you can get, and it's randomized. So the chances of you getting this armor could be quite tricky, or you could be quite lucky. But essentially, if you do get it, what you're looking for is the Scroll of Skellus Armor. If you consume this, then you will learn Skellus Cult Armors. These are level 60, and it is like a mix of normal and reinforced. Reinforced is pretty good, because you can see the chest plate there has a nice 134 armor value, and gives two bars of temperature, so that's quite nice. A larger look into the actual reinforced stuff, if we put it all together, that provides me 383 armor. It's a medium set, and it's all light, and the hood will give me bonus survival, and so will all the rest. So that gives me a plus 9 in survival, almost hitting that perk right there. Moving on to our next hidden armor, we're going to look at the Mask of the Witch Doctor, which can be found from killing the Witch Doctor. So for that we actually need to go to the Defari camp with all the drums, this is the red symbol, the summoning place. It might be quite difficult because the sheer amount of people in this camp, but it will be a good farm all the same if you come here anyway, because you can farm all of these people out. But if we're to go through here and all the way to the back, we will find ourselves a nice witch doctor to kill. This guy will usually be the one praying. So you can see, Tafari Witch Doctor, we're gonna kill it, and immediately she's dropped this helmet for us. I'll try again and kill it. In this one you can see, they don't have it, so it's not guaranteed for a drop, but you might just get fortunate enough. Now if you're wondering what this mask does, if I was to put it on, it gives me 18 armor, it's light, it gives me bonus survival, and it also protects you from poison, and it also protects you from sandstorms. But as well as that, it gives me a plus 10 in survival. So if you wanted to go and farm while it's sandstorming, then this is a nice helmet for you. Moving on to our next hidden armor, we have the underwater breathing mask. Now this is an absolute staple to my every time I play kind of an Exiles playthrough kind of thing. And you can find this in Buccaneers Bay. It's a small camp just above it, as you can see, there's the main camp, there's the ship. So we're right on the end right here, right up the top, in this area. 
You actually do need to kill a boss guy at the back wearing this crazy ass mask named Beastmaster Timos. If we kill him, he will drop the underwater breathing mask. And he seems to do it pretty much every time anyway. So if we take this one out, if you ever need to do a lot of swimming, then this is the gear because you can last underwater for a very long time with it on. You can see it's not completely taking my breath off, like it's still there, but you can see it's very very slowly ticking it away, and I mean very slowly. So if you wanted to do anything like go in the underwater dungeon or anything, then this mask will probably be absolutely essential for you to get. Now we're moving to the tundra to go and get something else important. This armor we're now going to go and find is called the Pride of Azir. I actually made a well-informed video on it that I'll be linking in the description, but for today's sake I'll be going for it as quick as a whip. Basically there's a ghostly guy that lives in this house. If you talk to him he will ask you to bring him things to actually purchase a scroll to be able to get this armor. You're going to need a fragment, notes and a crest from Forgar. And he can be found on this little island in his hut as his own. Now we need to go to several other huts to go and grab his ingredients. One of the huts is this one, it has a undead skeleton boss in it and he's quite actually scary. But you will need to defeat him to be able to get the actual thing you need out of this, so the recipe fragment from this one. This hut is on a big island of its own, you can see there, just next to Forgars and the Obelisk. So this is right here, you can see it's called the Cursed Mound, so that's the first ingredient we have. The second ingredient we need is from this little hut over here. If we were to go inside all the way in, you can see there's a chest in here. You can find four guards notes in this chest, but do beware, these chests are guarded by ghostly minions. And if we're to look on the map, this one is right here, near Ravage Barrows, in this hut here. And if we're to move a little on from this one to this tiny hut over here, also protected in other things, so this is right here on the map, just below the other one, this tiny, tiny, tiny little house. If we go in there, you're going to see a angry slaver dude called Gothrad. If we're to kill Gothrad, you can see he's going to drop you the crest. So now we have all three ingredients that we need. Now I have the ingredients if I'm to go back to Forgar and purchase the scroll. You can see I have the Pride of Azure scroll. If I consume this scroll using my use button, you can see I've learned Pride of Azir. This is a level 60 armor that can be made and is quite a decent set. It's a cold set and I'll just show you what the details are like. So here is the whole set, not the most attractive to me but I, you never know, you might really like it. But here we go, it's a medium set, 483 armor, looks pretty cool. It gives a double bar in cold protection and it will give you bonus accuracy, grit, strength, vitality and encumbrance. So essentially it's kind of like a knockoff version of the armors of from King Scourge, but it will give you a plus two and all these different perks, so that's quite nice. Moving on to our next sneaky hidden place for our sneaky armor, this is an armor I really love to get early on. Now the mobs at the entrance can be quite difficult and hurt a lot, so you might want to bring a shield to deflect arrows or things off like that. But you can pretty much lure them out of the entrance and then go in as I'm going to instruct you to do so. So don't bring in anything that you would want to lose, just bring things that are disposable and of course maybe a spare set of daggers. Now the reason we need daggers is because this guy we're going to have to kill and it's a nice way of doing it because you can bleed him out that way and that's the easiest way I've found to get rid of him. So this is the cave here, it is called Exalthus Refuge, hopefully I've got that right. And you can see us in this little bushy area right here, this cave in the mountain. If we're to go inside the mouth you can see there's a couple of disciples. These are the ones you have to watch out for, the rest you ignore. But for today's sake I'm just going to run past them, so you can either lure these out or you can fight them, but I'd recommend lure them out and leave them alone or just run right past them. So we're going into the cave and we're going to skip past everyone, skip to the back in between the rock, down below and into the water. So basically now we're here, we need to get onto the other side of the rock. So I'm going to cross the water with all the crocodiles and I'm going to climb up this face. But essentially once we're up the top of this rock, if we go over a little bit, 
you're gonna see there's a kneeling guy, a white kneeling guy. Now the idea is to only get his attention and his only, so nobody else's. And you wanna lure him to the back of here, or you could even lure him to the water down there, as long as you've got his attention. Now you can grab his attention by hitting him with a bow and arrow, or slightly approaching. So I'm gonna take my cloaking off and try and get his attention alone from just this guy. If you do get the attention of the other two, just remember you can just back away a bit, wait for them to calm down and then try again if you're low level because we only really want the attention of this guy. So I'm gonna sneaky sneaky, there we go, I've got his attention now. He's gotten up, here he comes. Alright, that's just what we wanted there. Unfortunately he's awakened all the other ones but I'm just gonna bring him down here. And basically what you want to do down here is just get rid of his HP. So I'm hitting him with these venom infused daggers which is really nice and as you can see he mostly gets staggered off this. He will hit back a couple of times but that's when you roll away and you eat your food and you heal. Now we look this time he's given us a chest plate. Now this guy is the only guy that will drop all these pieces of armor. He can drop two armor at a time or just one. Depends how lucky you are. Now this armor is the armor of Sebek, so you'll look just like him. White kind of gator look. It has had a little bit of an armor decrease last time I've played, but it's still quite worth it. It comes in a 462 armor, a medium set. Now it is legendary, but it does have a lot of durability, and I've never really gone through an entire set of durability when I'm using it. I mean, I will just come back on farm to get more if I do so. And look at that chest plate, it's got 4k Jura on it. Now this set is all bonus vitality, so you can see that's giving me a plus 9 in vitality, so that's almost a full perk there. And it's absolutely brilliant, I just love this stuff. Now if you don't like spiders you might want to look away for this part because it's going to be absolutely chock block full of them. In this cave right here you can find a boss spider. You can get this special piece of hidden armor from several places though. But this is my one of my favorite places to get it, the skittering cavern. So basically what we're looking for is a big hairy disgusting spider. And if you farm these cobweb piles in here with a sickle, you can get uh, nice amounts of silk and stuff from them. So, nice webbing and gossamer you can get to make silk. But he's like any world boss with the HP and stuff, but he drops something quite special. Usually any spider that looks like this will drop it, but this one I found first time most profoundly gave it to me. So you see his health bar might be a little bit challenging but luckily with spiders you can actually bleed and poison them. So you might want to bring perhaps snake arrows for it or something that will bleed it. Now for to kill it we're looking for a certain thing. It doesn't drop every time though. But here we go. Here's my second time getting rid of it. If I just find the right cops. Oh I had it for a second there. We are looking for the Nemedian. So this is where it is, and it is an awesome piece of secret armor that I actually discovered out of first of anyone. Now this helmet is really quite special, it provides ATA armor and it's a medium set, but that's not really what we're into here. If you take the time to read the description of this, you will see that if you wear it, it will repair any wielded weapon each time you take damage. I believe this might still work on thralls, but I'm not sure, so if you to give the thrall a weapon and put the helmet on them, then people used to repair their weapons that way, including legendary weapons and stuff like that. I don't know if that still works though, so don't quote me on it, but essentially you can just do it yourself anyway. Now if I let these spiders damage me and I watch my predatory blade, you can see the durability is going up every time they hit me. So essentially, I won't need a weapon repair kit for my nice weapon here. I would just need to let something weak chew on me for a bit and stuff like that. So these spiders I'd say is pretty good. You just stand here and you get eaten for a bit. Maybe you want to wear better armor than I'm wearing currently for this, but yeah. You can do it as long as you're taking damage, this thing will repair. And that is pretty much all of the hidden armors currently in the game, excluding dungeon armors. We will talk about dungeon armors in another video, but today we're just going over ones you can find in the world, but not in a dungeon. But anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope this has updated you on things that perhaps you didn't know before. 
if you'd like to check out more guides, I do have a playlist down in my description down below. Feel free to check that out. And if you want to stay on track for the video that's going to come out about the dungeon hidden armors, then make sure you hit that subscribe because you won't want to miss that video. But anyway, thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye! That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's probably the most horrible noise I've ever heard in my life, but you know. <laughs>